these are just a few additional tips that I've picked up the hard way and thought um, that others might benefit from seeing. And I'll note beforehand that, again, I'm not a sailing expert. I'm not a catamaran expert. I'm not a printle expert. Um, there's many ways to do the same thing, and I'm not going to tell you this is the only way to do it or the best way. It's just, again, what's worked for me. First topic I wanted to cover is the boom gooseneck. On my boat, um, the gooseneck looked like the part on the right here. I needed to replace it because I had a failed weld, and I've never seen it documented. I don't know if this is what came of the boat or if this is just something that came from some other source, but this is what I had. And on the left is the Hobie gooseneck and slide, and um, I just got this on eBay, but um, they still sell them new, and I'll put the part number in the description. Um, it fits exactly the same. It goes in the, the love track and the mast, exactly the same as the old one. Um, the slide part is exactly the same size, and it, it's easy to adapt it to your existing um, gooseneck on your boom. To actually pull the sail down, you can either tie off directly to the ring on the bottom of the slide um, at the gooseneck there, or um, you can put a small block on there, which will make it a little easier. You get a little mechanical advantage, um, but either way will work. You're not cinching down with the same force you would on a Hobie 16. Um, the printle owner's manual says just get the wrinkles out of the sail, basically. Um, so you can do it either way. Your first task is to get the slide into the left track of the mast. It can be a little tricky, but it's usually not too bad. And you can see here, I've got a little block. Um, this is a Ronstan block with a, they call it a through sheave becket, but any little block with a becket will work fine. I'll put the part number for this one in the description below. Um, so that's attached to the slide with a little shackle, and then you've got your downhaul sheet um, attached to the becket or the block. Your next step is to take the downhaul sheet and run it through the fair lead on the downhaul cleat. From there, you're going to bring the downhaul sheet back up and over the sheave in the block. Once that's done, you're ready to downhaul. Um, sometimes this can get a little fidgety. Um, you just got to make sure that that sail, the luff of the sail is, and the slide are both um, in the track, and then it should come right down. Once you've got the sail in the boom position where you want it, you just cleat it off and you're done. I've seen quite a few questions from people on um, how to connect your main sheet to the traveler car on the boom. So I'll give a brief description of how that's done here. You can use two sheets, one for the sail tension and one for the position of the traveler car, uh, but I find it a lot easier just to use a single one. I use um, snap shackles, basically like a quick release shackle for these connections. It makes it a lot easier and there's not enough force exerted to be a problem for those kind of fittings. The top block connects to the boom and the bottom one with the cleat connects at the traveler car. Once you've got things connected at the boom and the traveler car, take the bitter end of the sheet run it through the cleat and then the fair lead um, that's fixed 
um, on the rear cross beam. Once you've done that, you're going to run it through the fair lead in the traveler car. And what you want to do is put a figure eight knot in your sheet such that um, when the traveler car is as far out as you want it to be, it's going to be stopped by that knot. You don't want it to slam against the end. And then you can either knot it right at the little fair lead, or they call it a pad eye sometimes on the rear crossbar. You can do that, it's just fine. Or go, come up through the trampoline in a grommet and come back down and knot it there. It makes it a little cleaner. Um, doesn't really make a difference. It's performing the same function. It's just personal preference really at that point. And then at that point, you're done. Everything's connected and you're ready to go. One end of the line will um, allow you to control the tension on the sail and the other end will allow you to control the position of the traveler car. The final thing I'm going to talk about is rudder alignment. Um, the early boats had fixed crossbar lengths, so if your rudders were perfectly aligned, that was fine. Um, but if you're like me, you found that yours were towed out about a quarter of an inch, um, you didn't have any way to adjust them easily. So one solution to this is to get an adjustable tiller end, um, tiller crossbar end. You get those on eBay, see them from time to time, or other classified ads. Um, and it's really just a matter of determining the proper length to cut your existing tiller crossbar and then rivet that um, adjustable crossbar end on. Once you do that, you can, it's threaded, so you can spin it in or out to make it longer or shorter and then by extension um, allow your rudders to be parallel towed out or towed in, depending on your preference. Um, you can read a lot about people's opinions on that um, from what I've read and, and what I use. Um, I leave mine parallel, uh, but that's up to you.